George Lutz, a police officer with the Philadelphia Police Department serving Mantua. So my early childhood, my father wasn't around that much. He was always working. He was an alcoholic, so he was abusive to my mom and to my brother and his sister. But more so to me, I was the oldest. No one wants to see their mom get hit, you know what I mean? So I had a lot of anger, a lot of rage. But I was too small, too small to stand up to him. And my mom, she reminds me, he came home from work one time. I was probably three or four. And I spilled his beer. And he, like, cracked me. She thought she was going to have to take me to the hospital. It was bad. All because I spilled his beer. Growing up and seeing the stuff that happened to my mom, I said to myself, when I get bigger, when I get stronger and bigger, I'll be able to protect her. And I'm sure that's affected the way I think and the decisions I made in life as far as career path and other things. Growing up, I lived in Grace Ferry. It's a pretty rough neighborhood in South Philly. And seen some pretty crazy stuff that you probably shouldn't see as a kid. I lost one of my best friends. He got shot in the head at a young age. So that kind of, like, messed me up. He was a good dude. I've seen multiple people get shot. I've seen people do shootings. And just being from the neighborhood we were from, we were kids, we would do stupid stuff. So we would get chased by the cops. So we were scared. We would run. We would get chased by them. They would tell us to get off the corner. And, yeah, it was being a kid, doing dumb kid things. I always think that uh, you should have heroes. I would say my uncle influenced me as far as Greek mythology and stuff like that. He was kind of into that. And I fell in love with the whole thing, the history, the characters, the heroes, stuff like that. So brings me to Achilles, the number one warrior of all warriors. Just reading his story and just really inspirational and just gives you a sense of something in the world that you were born with a purpose. He was immortal everywhere except for his ankle. That's where you get the term Achilles heel. And he went through life and he was a great warrior, feared and respected. And it came to a time in his life where he had to make a choice. His mom told him, if you stay here, you'll have a long life with children and your name will only go as far as your children live till, but no one will remember your name. But if you go to Troy, you'll never come home, but your name will live forever. He went to a war with the Trojans. He wound up getting struck with an arrow in the ankle and he died. It affected me and made me think about what my purpose is in life. So that led me to think, I've always had a strong urge to protect from when I was younger, protect my brother and sister, my mom, and I feel like that was my purpose, to protect, and i just always been in that realm of things. After high school, I wound up getting a job in security. I was protecting a bank, and something was telling me to be a cop, and I was filling out the application, filling it out, filling it out, filling it out, I was getting denied, denied, denied because I didn't have college experience. They had just changed the requirements. So I said, I want to join the military. Go to the military and just do that. And when I'm done that, I'll see if I can be a cop. There was always something in me saying, you know, you, you need to do something like this. A heroic job, a, a protecting job, or not a job, a career, or something that you could fulfill your life's purpose. It makes me think of a Bible verse, book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? And then I said, Here am I. Send me. So it always resonated pretty good with me. Muhammad Ali says, He who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. It always kind of stuck with me. If you want to accomplish anything in life, you got to be willing to take a risk. Fail or succeed, you got to do it. Everything in my life's been a risk. I could have failed at any point in my life. Could have failed joining the military. I had no experience in military, anything. But I took the risk. I quit my job. 
and joined the military. Even with the police department, I was never good at school. Failed two tests in the academy, you're done, you're out. And like I said, I wasn't an academic guy. I was always in the sports and running around. So that was a big risk for me. I finally got accepted. Every day is a physical risk. We don't know what we're going to do, right? I had four, five of my friends already that I know. I don't have that much time on. Five of my friends already got shot. You know what I mean? Like, we take a risk every day. We don't know what we're going to walk into every day. We can get a radio call for someone with a gun that's shooting people at a hospital. All we know is there's a guy with a gun in the hospital. We don't know where he's at. What's he wearing? You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you don't have this information. Every day is different. One day you might be saving a baby from choking. The next you might be putting your thumb in some guy's neck because he just got shot to try to stop the bleeding and throw him in the back of your car to get him to the hospital as fast as possible. So these are all risks that we take every day. You don't want to do anything wrong because you have to be perfect. We're in a profession where you have to be perfect. Anything else is not acceptable in today's world. As a police officer, I would say you'd have to be crazy not to be scared or nervous. You have to be a crazy person not to have them type of feeling. But if you can control that fear, you can do anything. What's the hardest thing about being a white cop in a whole black community? I would say the hardest thing is everything. You're the bad guy. You're a white guy in a uniform. You're a bad guy. You can have your opinion on me until you meet me. I know after you meet me and have a conversation with me, I would say 99% of the time, you won't think that. You won't feel the same way after you leave the conversation. You'll find out real quick where I come from and what type of person I am. In 50 years, what I like people to say about me as a police officer, he always did the right thing. He was always there, always on time, always had my back. I pray every day that I make it home safe and people I work with make it home safe and people I don't know make it home safe. It's a dangerous job. I see in the people in Mantua trustworthiness that needs to be restored a little bit. And I would say the biggest thing would be hope, though, because I know the people that live there their whole life and own their houses and just want to go out on their porch and just sit down without having to worry about bullets zinging by their head or a drug transaction going on in front of their house or someone all high just tripping on their step. They just want peace. They want their neighborhood back. Just want a peace of mind, a peace of hope, a peace of peace. I'm there to protect you from the people that want to take away your peace. But I want to say to the people of Mantua, it's a pleasure protecting you. It's an honor. I won't let you down. I am George. I am the warrior. Addressing Community Trauma, Real Stories from the Bottom to the Top Project is produced by Mount Vernon Manor Community Development Corporation, the West Philadelphia Promise Zone, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Producer, Donna Griffin. Artistic Direction, Taya Sepinuk. Police and Trauma Consultant, Altavis Love Craighead. Music, Brian Caselli Jordan and Nimrod Speaks. Audio Engineering, Mike Moore at Lil Drummer Boy. Through storytelling, this project aims to highlight trauma as a public health issue ahead of encouraging participation in community-based emotional support programming to support healthier and safer neighborhoods. Special thanks to our police and community storytellers, Brian, Danielle, George, Rashid, Rakia, Chante, and Trey for courageously sharing their lived experiences. <laughs> <laughs>